So welcome to this week's Optum Health Clinic Facebook Live. And I'm at, uh, I'm at the office and I realized that I bought myself some new funky thing to hold the phone so I don't have to keep wriggling around with it. Uh, but I haven't got it. <laughs> so we're back to the usual uh, wobbly phone when I'm here. Um, but for this week's video, I wanted to talk about, the, I guess really the, the, the power of making subtle changes in the way that we're doing what we do. So the title of the video is, it's not what you do, it's the way that you do it. And the kind of classic story that, that kind of goes along with this is somebody that's working on being in a healing state. And let's say they had a background, let's say they were working as a trader in the, in the city and they were kind of under enormous kind of stress of busyness and noise and people and demands and stress. And let's say their systems crashed and let's say that they're, uh, you know, in stage one, the recovery process, let's say that they're, they're housebound or virtually bedbound. So one would think, because they're no longer in that environment, they're no longer surrounded by all of those deadlines and that stress and that noise, that they would therefore be in a healing state. The thing is, you can be in a stressful environment and be in a healing state, having conditioned your mind and your nervous system and learn how to kind of to settle and to calm things. You can be lying on a beach in the Maldives with the sun setting, with a glass of whatever it is you like to drink, with music playing in the background and the perfect dinner and lover awaiting you and you can be stressed. <laughs> you could be completely wired. So it's not what we're doing, it's the state we're in whilst we're doing what we're doing. The reason why this is so important and the reason why I wanted to cover this in this video is that we can be doing all the right things to be in a healing state. We can be in the right environment. We can be using stop process. We can be doing meditation. We can be doing EFT and tapping, we're taking our supplements. We can be doing all of the right things. But we are still in a state of doing. Our nervous system is still turned on. We are still in a state of trying to achieve at getting into a healing state. The analogy that I once used um, with, um, with a patient was, it was a little bit like um, playing golf. And I, I, I play less so these days. Um, the challenges of being married with three children and lots of things to do for work. But when I used to play, play a, um, a lot of golf, one of the things that was really interesting was the difference in, in the grip of the club. Like you can have the perfect swing, you can be doing everything right, but you can be holding the club too tightly. And that being too tight means that the movements become too aggressive and the flow of the swing doesn't work. And a very subtle loosening of grip, which is ironic because you would think that the tighter you hold the club, the more power you're going to have. But actually, a very subtle loosening actually can make an enormous difference in terms of the effectiveness of, of the stroke. So it's the same thing often with how we're using the tools and techniques that we're using, that we can be gripping too tightly. We can be trying too hard. We can be trying to achieve at getting into a healing state. And sometimes we can get so stressed at trying to calm everything down that actually the very action of trying to get calm is causing more stress and more anxiety. And so it's not what you do, it's the way that you do what you do. You can be doing all of the right things to get into a healing state, but the way that you're doing it, the tightness with which you're holding it, the expectation of the outcome, the pressure you're putting on yourself, the desire to get it right, is actually causing more stress than you're actually resolving. A little bit like the trader who's no longer on the trading floor, who is now resting at home, but actually more stressed and more wired than they were when they at least had somewhere to, to distract and focus the, the stress that, that was there. So partly what I wanted to do was just kind of point towards this. Like often if you can see it, you don't have to be it. Like if you can just go, hang on a second, that's me. I'm trying too hard. I'm kind of like you're doing, let's say, stop process 
with a kind of frenetic kind of like, I've got to find the patterns, I've got to get it right. Or you're sitting to meditate and you're telling yourself you need to do it better and you need to do it longer, you're not doing it right. And that's the very obstruction to being effective at the practice that you're supposed to be doing. So often, if we can just see it, then that alone will help us change it. And what we're talking about here is actually a very subtle difference. And it's, it's, it's a tricky one, and it's quite a difficult one to articulate because it's not an increasing of effort. If we're an achiever or we're someone that is used to kind of driving ourselves to do things, it's like, great, I see it, I need to kind of push myself, I need to change it. This is something where it's a subtle stepping back. Going back to my analogy about the golf club, it's like a subtle loosening of the grip. It's a being a little bit more patient in terms of our expectation with the tools and techniques that we're using. It's being a little more gentle with ourselves in the process of, of, of what it is that, that we're doing. Or it's having a more reasonable time frame in terms of the expectation of what it is that, that we want to happen. But really the invitation here is, is to look at, and I'm, I'm particularly looking at, at this idea of being in a healing state, but of course there's, there's different examples of, of, of how this could be playing out. But also like looking at when you're resting, are you really resting? I did a Facebook Live, it was either last year or the year before. Uh, if you go to theoptimalhealthclinic.com and you go to the blog, there's a list of all the Facebook Lives. And I did one about deep rest and about the importance of it's not just resting, it's not just taking time when you need to to lie down and, and you know, even listen to a visualization or whatever. It's not just going through the motions, but it's actually your system switching off. And sometimes we are trying too hard to make that happen. Sometimes um, we are doing all the right things in terms of taking supplements, but with so much time being spent panicking about getting it right or worrying about it getting it right, or we've been put on a nutrition program, and whereas our practitioner, this is not true in every case, depending on what program you're on, but often the advice will be, Follow it as much of the time as you can, like an 80-20 rule. If you do it 80% of the time, don't worry about the 20%. might be a bit different if you're treating SIBO or Candida or something like that. But let's say you've been given that kind of more flexible um, uh, guidance. But nonetheless, we're thinking, I've got to do it right all the time. It's got to be perfect. It's not what you do. <laughs> it's the way you do what you do. And if what you're doing is what you're meant to be doing is basically just supporting your body and having optimum nutrition and food. And now it's becoming this massive thing that we have to achieve at and we've got pressure on ourselves. Any benefit we're getting from the diet is actually now being counteracted by all the anxiety and all the pressure that goes around it. So it's not what you do, it's the way you do what you do. And often we need to just loosen a little bit of course, it's true to say that there are, there are people perhaps a bit early in the recovery process where we're not actively involved in driving recovery and we need to step up a little bit and become more proactive. So this is the kind of counterweight position for those of you which are putting too much pressure on yourself. That may not be true for everyone that, that's watching this. But if you are putting too much pressure on, loosen the grip. You can be absolutely determined, committed, consistent in following through with a looser grip. We can have this belief sometimes that if I'm not kind of if I'm not obsessing about this and driving this, it's not going to change. And one of the things that can be so fascinating is actually things can change faster when we slightly just loosen our grip of the way that we're approaching it. So I hope that's been useful. Um, you may have seen we had an email uh, last week, and I'll get mentioned. I'm sure with this video about conscious transformation, which is my online coaching program. If you'd like to work with me in a small group um, where over a 12-week program, I take you through some of the most powerful principles that I've covered over the years. If you're completely new to ME chronic fatigue recovery and the Optimum Health Clinic, it's probably not the best starting point. But if you're someone that has either done work with us already or you're someone that's done work elsewhere and you want to go deeper into some of the psychology principles to support creating deep and lasting change in your life. It's, a, it's an amazing program to do that. 
Um, you will each, every other week, you will watch a new module. The following week, we'll do a Q&A. You will send in how you're doing, your feedback and your questions. And I will answer, I endeavor to answer every question people send in. So if you've got questions that you would like to ask me, perhaps, you know, from Facebook Lives or from Secrets to Recovery, or particularly, of course, from the program as we go through it, if you'd like to have me as a support and a mentor over that 12-week process, um, then check it out at consciousTransformation.co.uk. Um, I'd love to have you as part of the program. It's my favorite program that I teach. It's the only program I still teach. Um, so yeah, would love to have anyone that wants to join that program as part of that. I hope that's been useful for this week's Facebook Live. Next week, we have an awesome recovery story. Um, it's a guy who actually hasn't been a patient of Optimal Health Clinic, but has been following these uh, our videos and our content over a number of years and is now um, uh, doing amazingly as an Instagram blogger and vlogger around um, healthy food and healthy living. Um, put us to enormous shame with his over 45,000, I think it is, Instagram followers. So we're going to do a Facebook Live of his recovery story next week. Um, healthy Living James is his, um, I think is his Instagram handle. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. That should be around six o'clock next Wednesday. And I look forward to talking with you guys then. Bye-bye for now.